So if you can turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10. And we're going to be in verses 25 through 37. And so this new series, guys, I hope really is going to bless you and meet the neighbors. We're going to talk about loving those who are closest to us, loving those who are nearest to us. And so we're going to first find out today who is our neighbor. We're going to read the text today, Luke 10, 25 through 37. And once you get there, please say amen. All right. And it reads, and behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to test, saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. And he said to him, you have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. Verse 29. But he, desiring to justify himself, said to Jesus, And who is my neighbor? Jesus replied, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and he fell among robbers, who stripped him and beat him and departed, leaving him half dead. Now by chance a priest was going down the road, and he saw him, and he passed on the other side. So likewise a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. Verse 33. But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had what? Compassion. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he set on his animal and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And the next day by, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper saying take care of him and whatever you spend I will repay you when I come back. Verse 36 when uh, which of these do you think proved to be a neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? He said he said those who showed him mercy and Jesus said to him you go and go Likewise, Amen. Let us bow for a word of prayer. Father God, we pray right now. Father, remove anything that is preventing us from hearing your word. God, we want to hear truth today. We don't want to, uh, anything preventing us from hearing your voice. So God, speak through your vessel today. God, I ask God that you go ahead and open the ears of your people so that they may hear your word clearly. Father, I love you. God, I praise you. Uh, allow the meditation of my mouth and the, the preparings that I prepared, Father, through this word to be edified today to bless your people. So, Father, it's in your son's name that I pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. All right. So who is my neighbor? So, saints, from the beginning, from the beginning, uh, we must understand the intent of, of God's moral law. God, my, God's moral law from the intent, from the beginning, has never changed. God has always wanted us to worship him, right, to put him as our main priority, but also to, to make sure we are taking care of the people around us, right? He wants us to love him, but he also wants us to love people. So any type of theology that we have that constitutes us loving him and not loving people, it's incomplete, right? Even from the beginning, when Cain killed Abel, uh, that was something that was shunned by God, right? So at that time, there was no moral, there was no uh, ceremonial law, there was no law of Moses that existed at that time, but God shunned Cain for killing Abel. So God's moral law has existed from the beginning. But even when we look back to the law of Moses and we look back to the Ten Commandments, uh, most of the Ten Commandments were directed to treating people, right? Four of them were to treating to how you treat God, 
But a majority of the commandments were how do you treat people, right? And if we will all be honest today, our biggest problems that we face today are not with God, right? It's with these messy folk that God created, right? It ain't with God, right? Your biggest problem is not when you were in your single life. Your biggest problem is when you started dating. And now trouble comes. Your biggest problem is when you by yourself and, uh, you know, you were a single man and you had your own house, you pay your own bills. But let, let get married, right? Then the problems come. All you married couples, right? You get married, and then uh, all of a sudden, uh, you have kids, right? It was okay when y'all were by yourself, but when you have kids, it adds a, another level of stress, another level of trouble um, on your life. So God, from the beginning, is saying, look, I, I want you to respect me. I want you to treat me, but let me show you how to treat your neighbor, how to treat people, how to deal with difficult people. And we go through the, uh, the, the uh, Ten Commandments. Uh, if we look, if we have them on the screen here. Um, so look, listen here, verse 17, these are the last six. Uh, you shall not murder. Okay, we can put those back on the screen. You shall not commit adultery. This is against people, right? You shall not steal, right, against people. You shall not bear false witness against who? Your neighbor, right? God's like, look, this is how you handle your neighbor. And last but not least, you should not cover your neighbor's wife. Not, don't cover your neighbor's possession. So uh, part of the, the commandments was, yes, this is how you treat God, but this is how you treat your neighbor. And so uh, what I want to teach to you through this series is, how do you love people around you? All right? God has placed you in strategic places in your, or your work environment, um, in your school uh, where, where, where your kids have been placed, uh, in your, me and Sherelle went to a community event yesterday. Uh, God has placed you in specific places. How do I love those people? Okay, how do I love those people? How many of you have actually met the people closest to you in your neighborhood? Okay, how many of them know you, right? Have you ever uh, uh, knocked on the door and said, hey, listen, my name is so-and-so, right? Have you ever taken that step to do so? So here, we have a lawyer in the text uh, that we're going to read about who uh, the Bible says that he was an expert on the law, right? He was a lawyer. So he was an expert on the law of Moses, right? Uh, verse 10 says that he was a lawyer. So this brother here knew the Bible backwards and forwards, right? He was a, a, a toting, Bible-quoting fellow, right? Uh, this brother knew if you said, look, look, hey, what is it saying? Deuteronomy 6.5, boom, boom, he got it there. Oh, well, what is it saying in, in, uh, in Leviticus 19? Oh, boom, he had it there. Okay, what is it saying? So this brother was a, a Bible-toting, Bible-quoting fellow because he was a lawyer. And at that time, um, they didn't have a constitution like we have. So they had a, a, an organization to where they, the, the, the laws of Moses were punishable by law. Okay, so here, if you disobey the law, uh, in the Bible, it's not really punishable. The Constitution's our guidebook. But back then, it was the law of Moses and the laws that they had today. Right? So this brother was an expert on the law. And if you, any of you ever get in trouble, who are you going to call? Right? If you get in trouble, and, and if, 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 who just got, I just got hit.com, right? 1-800, I just got hit.com. Is, is that the number? Okay, okay. Y'all yeah, know the saying. But you're going to find a lawyer because you need someone to help you uh, who knows the law better than you do to interpret it and to read. So this guy was a guy who was, was, was studied the law, who knew the, mo the Mosaic law. He knew it backwards and forwards, right? This guy was an expert. So here he is in the text in verse 29, putting Jesus to the test, right? And, and he said, the Bible says in verse 25, and behold, a lawyer stood up to put him to the test saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life, right? So from the intent, this brother's job was to trick Jesus on what does the law say, right? His intent was not to find truth. His intent was to trick Jesus, right? And so, saints, we must be careful that some of us, some of our intent is to be right, not to find truth. And so that was his intent here. He came to Jesus trying to prove himself correct, prove himself right, show Jesus what he, what he knew, but he didn't know that Jesus wrote the law. 
He didn't know that he was the son of God, that, that you can't trick this man. He knows everything about the Lord backwards and forwards. Okay? So, saints, never get to a point in your life where you think that you are smarter than God. You see, I, I love our discipleship process. I love that we're growing in the word, that we're, we're serving and we're getting so smart in, in the law, but never get to a point where you don't need God. Well, you know your Bible enough to where you really, you really don't need him, right? And so I encourage y'all, if y'all ever want to go to seminary, get your education, uh, uh, get your knowledge, right? But don't ever let that righteousness to lead to self-righteousness. At the end of the day, it was one person who died and died on the cross for you, and that is Jesus, right? So your heart must always be in an humble perspective where, listen, God, I'm coming to you for truth. I'm not coming to be right, but God, I need you to lead me to truth. Okay? So that's what this lawyer was doing, right? He didn't want to know truth. He wanted to prove himself right. Okay? So this man knew the Bible, but he no longer lend upon the Holy Spirit to work through him. And so this is something that we can become as religious folk, right? We come to church, saints, how you doing? Well, I'm blessed and highly favored, sister, right? Um, and so we, we know the church lingo, but we don't allow the Holy Spirit to work through, it, through us, and so our, 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 our knowledge of the Bible is not seen evident in, in, in the world, okay? So here this lawyer is, thinks he's smarter than Jesus. Saints, don't ever get to a, part, a point in your life well, you are smarter than Jesus. But I like how Jesus responds, okay? And this is the same way I'll respond to you all or the same way you should respond to people, okay? Because it says in verse 26, he said to them, right? So the, 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 uh, the lawyer comes to Jesus trying to trick, trick Jesus and say, Jesus, how should I inter uh, inherit eternal life? Look how Jesus was responds to, to, the, to, the, uh, to the man. Jesus says, he said to him, what is written in the law, right? So Jesus answers a question with a question, right? But notice how he carries this, this a little further on. Not only what is written, but how do you read it, okay? Because here's the thing. Some of us know the word of God, but we have a poor interpretation of how to read the, read the word, okay? We know the word, but our interpretation is poor. And one thing is if you study the prosperity gospel, right, the name it and claim it uh, philosophy that, listen, you can name God, I want a new car, and the car just pop up, right? He shall supply all my needs according to his. We know that scripture, right? This name it and claim it philosophy, right? We, we have a poor interpretation. We know what the word of God says. Yes, he will supply all your needs according to your riches, but that does not mean he's going to give you a Benz and a Cadillac. Okay? Supplying all your needs is food, water, and clothes. Right? I'm driving out there a 2002 Chevrolet Tahoe that's got 151,000 miles on it. Needs have been met. Amen? I don't need a Bentley. I don't need, I don't need a Cadillac. I don't need all these nice things. But because of our poor interpretation, okay, we know what the word says, but we have a poor interpretation. Okay? And so notice this thing. Notice how wicked our hearts are. Because we can so read the word and interpret it based on what we, what we want to get out of it. Okay? The Bible is not a bag of trail mix. Right? Well, we pick the, only the pieces we want. Right? And I like them crispy wafers. That's the only part I like out of the trail mix. Okay? But saints, you can't select what you want out of the word of God. Here's this, saints. You can't selectively select which day you want to come to church. Okay? This is how we treat God. This is how we treat uh, the word where we, we, we interpret it how we want to interpret it. Okay? We have the, uh, th these different translations, and, I, uh, uh, and, and this, this may be your translations, right? The IMF translation. In my feelings translation. How many of y'all got that? How about this one? The SWV version. The stay woke version, amen? I got a stay woke translation. You see, man's heart is so wicked. 
And so that's why you must be careful when you read the word to always pray, Holy Spirit, guide me to truth. Because you can make yourself right. But truth stands, amen? amen? All right, so listen up, listen up. So notice how Jesus responds to this. <clears throat> and I love this text. So the man asked Jesus a question. Jesus responds to him, says, what is written and how do you interpret it? So notice how the man answers, right? He answers the question correctly, right? You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, with all your neighbor's self. He's a lawyer, right? <laughs> Woo! He did a great job. Great job, lawyer. And Jesus said to him, you answered this correctly. Do this and you will live. But look at verse 29. Okay? Because if you ever want to get the truth out of a person, let them keep talking. Okay? There's, th well, there's a couple ways to get the truth, right? If they're under the influence of alcohol, <laughs> we can get, that's that truth serum, right? They start telling everything. Number two, when they get old. You ever been next to an old person? Boy, they don't care. They don't care how you feel. So, 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 so going to tell you, girl, that shirt, that skirt too short. She may get up in the night. Put, put some over that shirt. Yeah. When you get old, right? But another way to hear someone, um, uh, to, to get someone to, to tell the truth, right, or to tell their true intent is let them keep talking, right, to keep listening. And that's why sometimes as wise folk, sometimes the wisest thing you could do is to shut up and let them, and just listen. Okay. So, so, and do like Jesus, ask questions. Oh, really? Sister when you dating that brother, just, just keep listening, right? He can't spit game. He can't, can't trick me long enough. Yeah, girl, see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm starting my business. And uh, so how much money your business make? Okay, all right. Now that you're messing with you. <laughs> if you want to get the truth, let someone keep talking. So this man keeps talking, right? But listen what he says in verse 29. But he desiring to justify himself said to Jesus, who is my neighbor? Right? So already this man, to justify his intentions, right, he was already defining who his neighbor was. He had a correct, right, orthodoxy, which is sound doctrine. He knew what the Bible said, but his orthopraxy was jacked up. His practice of the doctrine was jacked up. Okay? So, so he, he, he knew how to spit that verse out. But he already manipulated the verse to, to, to justify himself and feel right. Right? So he, by him asking this question of who his neighbor was, he had already made up in his mind who his neighbor was and wasn't. Okay? But look how Jesus does. Now look how Jesus responds to this. Right? Sometimes folk just don't get it. Right? And so what Jesus does in this text is he takes it a step further. He tells them a parable, right? And so parables, we all know parables, or Jesus taught in parables. And parables were not uh, stories that actually happened, but Jesus taught them for them to make a point, right? So Jesus has intent here uh, through, his, through, his, through his, 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 his message, right? So we all know the story of the Good Samaritan, right? Is this okay, y'all? I'm, I'm teaching today. I feel like teaching today, okay? <clears throat> so um, let's look through the, the Good Samaritan story, right? Because this man wants to know who this neighbor is. And Jesus uh, is going to answer this question through the parable. So let's listen. So there was a man going from Jerusalem to Jericho. And through my studies, I found that, there, that there was, this is a rough part. This is like a brother going through Acre's home at, at 2 o'clock in the morning. Right? Going through Third Ward at 2 o'clock in the morning. Cyprus, you can go 2 o'clock in the morning, Cyprus. Everybody riding their bikes. You know, but his brother was in a, in a rough part at the wrong time, right? And what happens when you in a rough part at the right time, wrong time, wrong thing? He got beat up. Somebody bust him up, put them hands on him, bop, 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 and left him half dead. The Bible says they left him half dead, so he left him there. The brother was almost dead, but that's good news. Right? Some same people were on that same path. Right? And so look what happened. 
Look what happened, right? A priest walks by, right? A priest walks by. And so this is a preacher, a man of God. And what did the preacher do? He slide. <laughs> slide to the left. Doom. Slide. The preacher walked by on the other side. He passed him up. Okay? And what I was reading in my study is I wanted to find out why in the world did the, man of, did the preacher pass the man up? Well, here's the point. Okay? Back in the Levitical law, right, it was written in, in Leviticus 21, 1 and 2, it said that, and the Lord said to Moses, speak to the priests of Aaron's and say to them, no one shall make him unclean for the dead, uh, for the dead among people. So if you went near a, a dead body that was unclean, you would make yourself unclean. Okay? So the priests, here's, here's instruction from Moses to the priests in Leviticus 21, the priests, right, thought that the man was dead. Right? So that's why he passed the man up. But here's the thing. The Bible says that the man was half dead. So the priest counted the man out when he had an opportunity to rescue the man. Right? The, the priest had counted the man out. He, he said, that brother is not even worth saving. Right? I'm not going to mess up my cleanliness trying to help this brother. Right? He interpreted that the brother was dead. Right? And saying, this is, this, let, apply this to your life. Okay? There are so many people that you have counted out. Right? That you have said are dead. That are not worth witnessing to. That are not worth uh, uh, inviting back to church. I invited you four times. Right? You are dead. Right? You are helpless. There are people that are hooked on drugs, right, that are, that are ha come up in broken homes that we have, society has placed as ha dead, but the Bible says that they are only half dead. Right? There are people that we have counted dead that Jesus wants to live through. So here in the text, the priests say he dead. He didn't, he, he could have called somebody. Right? If, if he couldn't touch the body, he could have said, listen, listen. Uh, he could have called 1-800, I just got hit. <laughs> he could have called somebody, or he could have waited to help Cain, but he just walked by. Saints, how many of us are walking by half-dead people? Don't give up on them. But here's the good news. A Levite comes. Levites were assistants to the priest. Right? So surely he's been next to the pastor. He's going he gonna, he gonna, he gonna, he gonna to help out, right? He's been discipled by the pastor. But look what the Levite did. Levite passed him up too. He kept on walking. So the question I have for you, the saints, uh, today, saints, is do you. Uh, so, so let's look. So the Levite uh, passed him over. Okay? So let's keep reading. But then there's a Samaritan. Right? A Samaritan that comes. And let's look at what the text says. Right? The text says, But a Samaritan, as he journeyed, came to where he was, and when he saw him, he had what? He had compassion. Right? So my question to you, saints, is do you pass over people or do you have compassion? Do you pass over people that are hurting and helpless, or do you have compassion? We are to have compassion for people, especially those that are hurting. Do you pass over? And I know one thing that's happened today in our society is we have been desensitized to events, right? Another police shooting? <laughs> oh, wow, that just happened again, right? Because we're so... We're so uh, we're so inundated with information, right? And just like my kids, right? Well, any of you have kids, uh, if, if, if you hear crying upstairs and you go upstairs and nothing, everything's all right, the next time you hear crying, what you going to do? You're going to stay downstairs. And this is the same way, right? Another police shooting, another uh, mass shooting at a school. Oh, wow. I mean, it just happened. 
And what we have done, saints, is we have lost compassion. We have lost the feeling of our hearts severely dropping for people. We have become disconnected because we're Facebook friends, but we never even shook hands. We don't gen- genuinely know and love people. And so we see something on the gram, it's as quick as a scroll over. Right? And so, saints, what we must, what I'm impressing upon you today is we must have compassion especially for those that are hurting, right? And so do you have a, a Passover or a compassionate type attitude? So this is what compassion involves. And compassion involves empathy, okay? Empathy means putting yourself in that person's shoes. What if that was me? What if that was me, Right? What if that was my child who got shot? Then you'd have compassion, right? Empathy is not, well, well, they should have did this or should have did that. It's putting yourself in that person's shoes, right? But look at this. Compassion is not just empathy. Compassion is action, right? If your compassion does not move you to action, it's in vain, right? If you say, well, I feel so bad for the people at Harvey, but you didn't do nothing to help. Was it genuinely compassion, or were you just trying to make people feel good? Because we can say it. I I even have, I need to do something about it, right? My very own brother lost his, I had to do something about it. I can't just say, brother, I'm sorry, let let me pray for you. Let me get a Baptist response. Let me pray for you. And why, you you pray over the phone. You don't even go to the house, just pray over the phone. All right, pray. All right, good. Compassion should lead you to sacrifice. Okay? We are so busy today that we can't stop and take attention to what matters. Oh, I got to get to work. Oh, I, I, I got to go to this, this event. I got I to go here. We're so busy that we don't have the time to take care of people that are in need. So I'm sure this brother, this Samaritan brother, stopped. He, had a, he, was, he was going somewhere. He may have had to go to work. He may have had to go get some groceries. But he sacrificed his time, right? The Bible says he put him in an inn. He sacrificed his money, right? Some of the cheapest folk are church folk, right? Well, we, we, we hold a fundraiser. Can you buy a plate for, so, for so-and-so? Oh, well, uh, the way my money's set up. Have compassion, saints. And so we'll study deeper into this text about who the neighbor was. And we're going to talk about race relations in, in, in here uh, because this, this, this text is all about race relations. Okay? Uh, the man, the lawyer, was a Jew. And just so happened, Jews and Samaritans, they they weren't kosher, okay? So the intent of the text is Jesus is questioning this man who he knew in his heart had some harsh feelings toward this brother, okay? You don't love all people, you love some people, right? You love people that look like you, but you don't love people that don't look like you. This is what Jesus is saying, okay? So let's read deeper into the text. So Jesus reads on. Let's read, let's, read, let's read on. Okay, we're in verse 38. So Jesus shows them these three men, right? The, the, the guy didn't get it, so he shows, it to, he shows them the priest. He shows them the Levite. And then he shows them the Samaritan. And then he asks them this question is, which of these three do you think proved to be the neighbor to the man who fell among the robbers? And the man said, he showed, he said, the one who showed him mercy. Okay? So listen here. The text, the, the, the title of the sermon is, Who is my neighbor? Okay, the answer to this question is, your neighbor is anyone who has a heartbeat. Anyone who is living. That is your neighbor. 
And I'm going to touch on, on, on race relations and, and, the, and how do we contextualize this in America. Because, listen, I, I understand that, that racism is real. But listen up. You cannot operate your life in a skew of everybody is against you. You can't hate all people, right? You can't hate your white brother, right, who just come and just, <laughs> he kind of, can I help you? No, brother. <laughs> no, brother. You're part of my oppressor. <laughs> this brother just want to help you with some groceries out of the car. He your oppressor, you know? It's like, Lord Jesus, this brother... Just stay woke. <laughs> Help us, Jesus. And so we're going to talk about this, how we deal with this as, as, as people. Okay? But listen here. If you look at life in the views of an American, you have missed the true calling upon what Jesus said, go make disciples of all nations. You see, this whole constitution, this whole perimeter that we're in, this is man set up. Man said, I'm going to set up this constitution. I'm going to set up all these laws. This is man ordained. But when we are witnessing to people, we've got to think kingdom. The kingdom is beyond America. The kingdom is beyond white. The kingdom is beyond black. The kingdom is beyond Hispanic. Right? So who is your neighbor your neighbor is people. At the end of the day, right, when you bleed, what do you bleed? You bleed red blood, right? And my pigmentation, I love it. Embrace it, right? I don't apologize for being black. I love it, right? I don't know how I got here like this, but I love it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I was on the, uh, this part of the equator or what? I, I don't know. But your neighbor is not defined by your pigmentation. Your neighbor is not defined by your social class. Okay? All of a sudden, you got happy. You finally got a good job. Now you middle class. Now you moved out the hood. Now you all good, Amen. So, saints, we must think kingdom. It's not black. It's not white. It's not green. It's anyone who has a heartbeat. So when we see someone hurting, we've got to have empathy. We've got to have compassion. Catch this, saints. And I want you to get this. <clears throat> Your, your measure of your love for people is not measured to people that are on your same level. Your measure of your love for people is how you treat people that are considered least. It's easy to love people that love you back. It's easy to love people that think like you, that are on the same level of education as you. But what Jesus is pointing to the Jew, the lawyer, who probably has some money in his bank account, is, is not how you love your fellow Jews, it's how do you love the people that are considered the least. That's your ultimate guide stick, right? Jesus said, Matthew 25, 45, I think we have that verse on the screen. He says, then you will answer to them saying, Truly, truly, I say to you, as you have done to the least of these, you have done it to me. Right? So how you treat people is a reflection of how you treat God. So as you slap your neighbor, right? And I'm going to tell the story, guys. I had, let me tell you, let me, let me, let me share with how, how pastors jacked up. So I had my neighbor today. And I hope he didn't watch this video, because I'm going to talk about him. <laughs> this was right after the, the, the Trump elections, right? And so we bought this new home, and I came to, I, I came to ask him, can I park in front of his house? He's a, he's a, he's a, he's a white brother, 
right? Old, older white man. And so I came to his door and knocked, and he barely opened the door. I'm like, this brother think I'm a robber or something. I thought, this brother is a racist, Republican, Trump voter. That's what I thought, right? That, that, that's that's what, what I thought. So my response to that is, y'all be careful going next door, kid. We don't know this fool. That was my response at the time. But do you know that over time, we have developed a bond? We have developed a loving for each other, right? He is not racist, right? He comes over, he loves my boys. He, help, he, say, he, he helps my boys with basketball and baseball. And we talk, hey, hey, Mr. how you doing, Mr. Gale? How was your week, right? His grandson come eat all our food. <laughs> He's our son. <laughs> He's our son. So listen here, saints. Biblically, biblically, who is your neighbor? Not based upon how you have felt or the things you've gone through in your own life. Biblically, who is your neighbor? Your neighbor is anyone. Anyone with a heartbeat. Anyone breathing. Any social class. Any race. Any background. That's who our neighbor is. So, saints, we're going to stay in this text, and we're going to talk about race. I think I need to dig, dig a little deeper into the, the race thing today, uh, given to where we are. I'm going to dig deeper into that. We're also going to talk about how to treat our neighbors, because this Samaritan, it's a certain way he cared for his neighbor. I want us to carry that uh, to our community. But listen here, I want to point to this point as, as I close. The robbers beat the man up. The robbers beat the man up. Left the man half dead. But Jesus says, what? That's who I want. That's who I want you to care for. And I don't know where your background is, whether you've been beat up, you've been talked about, you've been downtrodden. Listen here. Jesus wants you. He loves you. He cares for you. And he did exactly what the Samaritan did. He took the man in. He dusted off his wounds. He took him to the best inn. He told the innkeeper, listen, anything he charges, I'll pay for it. That's the same thing Jesus did for us. He died on the cross. He died a sinner's death. All that so you all can live. He came to give you life and life more abundantly. So if you are living beneath this today, I'm going to ask the one that you first receive Jesus into your life and receive Jesus into your heart. That's the first step. But the second step is get connected to a local church. You need to be here. You need to be fed. You need this word in your life. But not only that, you need the people of God to be committed. You need someone to challenge you. And so at this time, I'm going to offer that to you. If you have, don't know about Jesus, don't know who he is, if you want to know him better today, now's the time. 